If you've ever gone to a new doctor and they say bring your medical records along, it's difficult. It's a Xeroxed uh, group of documents. So for a patient to own the data is, it sounds like a great idea, but it's logistically and technically quite, quite difficult. Now, enter digital health. Digital health and the emergence of the electronic medical record will change that. And it will change it in the context not only that you own the data, but you want the data. Because you become the advocate for yourself. You become the advocate for health. Everybody knows about the check engine light in a car. It's something that people either religiously follow or a lot of people avoid. That's the same analogy to health. Digital health will give you a check engine light for your body, and the light will go on when you need to do something. So there's going to be a big shift to owning the data, but also interpreting the data so it's relevant. Remember, for you, the red light, check body light, is important. But if you see an elevated serum glutamic oxaloantransaminase level, it becomes less meaningful to you because you can't put it into the appropriate health context. Care will no longer be all about the doctor or all about the parent and child. There will be an interactivity where digital medicine is the conduit through which these two things happen. Let me give you an example. It's, in, it's the middle of the night and your child has a fever. What do you do? Well, you call the doctor and hope for the best, go to the emergency room. It's sort of one thing or the other. But digital health will give you tools like an adapt an adapter to your smartphone where you can do a certain diagnostic test. That information can be relayed to a physician or done real time through a computer and give you diagnostic and therapeutic information. We should have enhanced communication that uses all the resources we have that allow patients to engage their physicians in a richer, more appropriate dialogue. And that's going to facilitate diagnosis. It will facilitate um, appropriate care and it allow you to actually track this over time because it's all part of, of the electronic medical record or the, the electronic health record. Maybe the physician of the future will be a technology specialist. And maybe we'll have a cardiologist and a gastroenterologist and a gynecologist and an informationologist. Someone who understands the nature of technology and information mapping in the context of care. All right, it just may be an interesting way of going because I don't know if, if any formally trained physician will be able to handle the, nature, handle the nature of information. I'll give you an example. Um, a steering wheel on a car that measures your blood sugar. This is the way you integrate health and wellness into the things you do every day. So that if you're driving, and this is actually being developed right now, uh, through a company called Medtronic. They, they, they manufacture devices like pacemakers and they're looking at, at how digital health can be incorporated into our day-to-day -day life so you, you don't have to stumble through a complex computer algorithm to understand what your HbA1c sugar level is. That goes away. But if you're driving a car and you're a diabetic, the car will tell you, pull over, your blood sugar is low. When you stand on the scale in the morning, the, the, the scale might tell you something to remind you what to do. When you're brushing your teeth, that interface between your gums and the toothbrush may connect electronically to, to the cloud and tell you something about, about your dental needs. It may find cavities. The t-shirt that we wear will have sensors that will track your heart rate and your body temperature. And if something happens or goes wrong, your check body light will go on. When you eat your food, the interaction between your hand holding that fork and eating can provide very, very rich information. In fact, there are devices now that track that motion and tell you you're eating too much. So the interesting thing is to get health and wellness and all those very technical clinical indices like serum glucose levels as well as activity and steps incorporate into your life in a way that it evaporates. And, and that's part of the magic, and that's, that's what Apple does in a way, that it disappears, it becomes the fabric of our lives. And I know that's a, that's a line from a commercial, but the reason I'm using it is because sensors and these type of devices will become embedded into the fabric of our lives.
big thinkers like this are saying that this is the next big explosion. And the magic that lives here, the people thinking at MIT, at, at academic institutions, the, the entrepreneurial spirit of people who are making this stuff up, that's, that's going to change things in ways that we can't even predict. So, you know, I, I can't sit still in my chair when I start talking about this because this really is things that are not only going to change our, our mundane day-to-day -day existence, but change our lives, save our lives. Do you know that, that a, a girl born today has a one in three chance to live to 100? It's been said that, that the first person to live to 150 is alive today, already. This is because of technology, and this is because of health. And we're in for a, for a heck of a ride, and uh, I'm glad I'm on board. How is technology changing your world? Join the conversation at tvo.org slash pull.